Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Joseph. So in this particular video here, I'm going to give you an overview of what population balance is. Let's jump straight into this video. So in real life, many quantities are being distributed. For example, they will be distributed in size. If you look at a bunch of particles here, right? And you've, if you actually sample this particle here, right? If you sample this particle here and you actually go and count the number of particles for a particular size of the particle, you'll be able to actually build a distribution curve that looks probably like this. So let's just call this distribution the number density, right? Let's just call this the number density. So let's say initially the particle distribution or the particle number density looks like this, okay? So if you put these particles under processing, for example, if you mill it or grind it, so how does this distribution or the number density evolve with time, right? How does it change with time? So this is the question that is very important that we are going to try to answer by this particular technique called population balance modeling. So when you subject this bunch of particles under milling or grinding operation, or say for example, if these particles are polymers that is subjected to enzymatic hydrolysis, right? How does their distribution evolve with time? So for example, they can evolve in such manner. This is at time zero, and this is at time one. Okay, and then after some time, they can evolve to another distribution. So when we try to track the temporal evolution or the transient of this number density, um, what are the techniques that we can use to model this behavior, right? So because in many, many applications in real life, um, the distribution matters, right? For example, in milling, it's going to be very important to control the size distribution of the particle or maybe in pharmaceutical processes where you are trying to uh, produce some drug crystals, right? So the size distribution of the crystals that you produce are very important. So how do we actually control them to the product specification that we want? So in this regard, modeling can help us. And more specifically, we can use population balance modeling to model the so-called distribution or the number density with time, okay? So this example here, we are talking about the dependence of number density with just size. So this is a one-dimensional population balance problem. So there could be other cases or other examples whereby you do not only talk about a one-dimensional example, but you could be talking about examples in which two or more um, dimensions are being involved. Okay, for example, if you look at a cellulose nanocrystal here, right? This is a cellulose nanocrystal, an example of a, a picture of a cellulose nanocrystal, right? When you put in a bunch of biomass subject to enzymatic hydrolysis or acid attack, and then you remove all the amorphous region and eventually you get this crystal form of cellulose. And this crystal form of cellulose is very, very useful. And the main thing that determines the application or the property of the cellulose nanocrystal is the dimension, right? So their, their dimension, basically, you can approximate them by saying that they can be characterized by, say, maybe their width or, and their length. So in this particular example, then there will be two dimensions that you are concerned about, right? You want to specifically control the length and the width because these two will contribute to the aspect ratio of the cellulose nanocrystal. So in this sort of example, then you'll be talking about two dimensions. So if it's in two dimension, then the number density with respect to these two dimension of property of, property of the particle can look something like this, right? So it will become a, a surface um, curve here of the number density where it's dependent on two property here, right? Okay. So the length and the width, perhaps, right? So this is another example of situations whereby the distribution of a particle is important. Now I'm referring loosely to particles, right? But in fact, it can be anything, right? Anything that has a distribution. 
and when the distribution is very important then this as this particular aspect is something that we should consider when we attempt to model them when it's important for us to model the distribution and this is the focus of this particular video so there are many many other examples with a common theme of being distributed for example when we talk about polymerization right in polymerization you talk about the chain length distribution right if you have a linear polymer and the polymer will have varying or different chain length you have this is a polymer with uh, six monomer being joined together and then you might have polymers with three monomers being joined together so when you subject these polymers under certain certain action right for example if you use an enzyme to hydrolyze them or you use an acid to acid to break them or even when you have polymers that join together to form a larger polymer right instead of being broken down into small pieces they can combine to form larger pieces then this is also possible right in polymerization the common theme of being distributed exists and also in the case of crystallization as we have mentioned just now in the production of uh, drug crystals in the pharmaceutical area then the size and the shape of the crystal is very important because when you have a bunch of crystals that are being produced right not every crystal in your broth is going to have the same shape and size so in that particular scenario then the distribution matters right how many or how many within that crystal um within the broth contains the size and shape of crystal that you want right can we calculate some properties of that distribution for example the average size or the average shape right whether it's number weighted whether it's a uh, uh, it's a weight based type of average we can calculate once we have the distribution we will be able to calculate all the different properties of the particle okay and say in milling when you have a particle and you want to grind them this also has a common theme of being distributed and not only for particles right sometimes when you talk about cell right uh, 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 when you have a bunch of cell those cells will have different age right so every cell would experience a different phase of growth right this cell may be older than the other cell so in this case the age can be a property that is being distributed so then population balance can also be used to model um, biological cells okay and many more and there are many many more examples so a good review and a very very excellent review that gives uh, an idea of the applications of population balance can be found in ramkrishna and singh 2014 okay so most of the people might already be familiar with the equations that conserve momentum say for example the navier stokes equation very famous equation or the energy equation link being shown here or we are also familiar if if we are in mechanical engineering or chemical engineering we are also familiar with the continuity equation and chemical engineers especially uh, if the students who studied transport phenomena they will be familiar with the species advection diffusion equation so these are equations that conserve a particular aspect of a system right it's either momentum, energy, mass, or species. So in all the examples just now that we talk about when the particles are undergoing some form of transformation, for example, like milling, grinding, enzymatic hydrolysis, or aggregation, agglomeration, what would be the equation that can conserve the number of particles in that particular system, right? Because all these transport equations that we've, we are seeing here conserve some property right for example they conserve momentum they conserve energy they conserve the total mass and they conserve the mass of the species so in those examples just now that we spoke about we need to conserve the number say for example we have a particle here a big particle or we call it a parent particle and it breaks into two smaller daughter particle the number of particle in this case must be conserved right two particle one particle split into two particle you take the two smaller particles and you sum them back up the property must be equivalent to the parent particle conversely or on the other hand you can have two smaller particle right that joins together and form one larger particle here in the case of agglomeration 
Well, in this case, two becomes one, and there must be some property that is being conserved between the two cases, right? So in this case, we speak about the conservation of number. And this is what population balance equation is all about, right? It's, it's basically a transport equation, a governing equation that tries to conserve the number of the quantity that is being uh, studied, right? The number of the particle. Okay, so the conservation of number is basically represented by the general population balance equation, which is shown here. Okay, so in this particular equation here, n is the number density. All right, x is the internal coordinate. So internal coordinate here is just a term that represents the coordinate that you choose to represent your particle. For example, the size, right? And in the case of, say, polymer, perhaps the degree of polymerization. So this is an example of the internal coordinate that is being chosen. Spatial coordinate is represented by R. Spatial coordinate means in your physical system, you have, say, for example, your X, Y, and Z, right? In a physical three-dimensional space. That's your spatial coordinate system. And this H here in the equation, right, this term here, is the source and the sink term. I'll explain in a while what this means. But basically, if we look at this population balance equation here, the first term tells you how the number density evolves with time. So if you have a particle size distribution, how this distribution actually evolves with time is being described by the first term, the partial derivative of the number density here. So the second term in the population balance equation here tells us how the number density evolves with the internal coordinate space, right? It might be a little bit difficult to understand uh, what this means here, but I'm trying my best to explain it as uh, simply as possible, as layman as possible. Say, for example, if you, if you imagine that uh, your crystal, right, in your broth, the crystal of a particular size can actually grow with time, right? So if the crystal of a particular size can actually grow with time, then there is a movement through the size uh, dimension. So the, the convective term through the internal coordinate space is represented by the second term here. And then the third term here simply just tells us how the number density is going to evolve with the physical space. If you just imagine if you have a, if you have a tank here, right? And let's just say that it's not a well-mixed system. So if it's not a well-mixed system, you put a bunch of particles into the system, okay? And you sample randomly at different, different points in this particular tank here, you are not going to get the same distribution. Now, there will be spatial variation of the number density under the case where the tank, the system in the tank is not well-mixed. This term here is going to tell us how the number density evolved with space. All right. The last term here, as I mentioned just now, this is the source or the sink term. So now this term here tells us how the system attempts to conserve the number when there is a birth or a death processes happening in the system. For example, if your particles are being broken, one particle, one big particle breaks into two smaller particles then there's going to be breakage. So this breakage process will be included in this H term here. On the other hand, if you have two smaller particles joining together or aggregating or agglomerating together to form one big particle, then this is also considered by this term H here. Okay, so that's basically the population balance equation. So essentially by solving this population balance equation here and choosing the internal coordinate carefully that means we define what x is whether x is the size or whether x is the degree of polymerization then we will be able to obtain the change in the number density or the distribution with time so an example is something that is represented in this figure here how the number density actually changed with time if we solve this population balance equation we will be able to model this so this is an overview video so i'm not going to go particularly uh, deep or I'm not going to explain in more detail of what each term can expand to mean um, but if you find this video helpful 
and you find this video useful to help your understanding about population balance equation, be sure to hit like and subscribe and comment down below whether this has helped you in your study of population balances. So if you would like to see more videos like this that explains more about population balance equation, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you and see you.